say what it do what it do thank you for dropping by my page so today's topic is finding solace in your solitude and i will dive into that but first to explain to those who are new to my page or don't quite know what i'm doing basically i created the urban Gurvy mama as a persona to help guide people on their spiritual journey whatever stage you're on and i personally have endured very you know trying times like most other people but a lot of hardships and difficulties and traumas in my life and through that process i had to see what the lesson was i had to pull back and look at things from a different pair of lenses and just see a different perspective and through that, I was able to gain a lot of knowledge and insight on certain things. And now I'm here to reteach it to others so that they can have an easier path, life or whatnot. And in addition, I created this uh, YouTube to spark the brain of someone else watching. So then they can take the torch and they can teach others. Because at the end of the day, you know, we are all a reflection of each other and we all can only do this together. We can only do this together. And I know that my knowledge and my wisdom is not for myself. It is meant to be shared with others. And that's what I'm doing. So finding solace in solitude, you know, right now we're going through a time where we're forced to be with ourselves. And at least for the last two centuries, I don't think we've ever had this opportunity. And for the first time, we're not being really held accountable to anything. You know, most of us do not have to go to a job unless you are a essential worker and God bless you right now saving the world. But if you're not a non-essential worker, which is a good amount of the population of the world, you know, you're home. Uh, for the most part, energy bills, mortgages and rent payments, you know, you're not going to be held accountable. You're not going to be thrown out of your home. Um, most carriers for cell phones aren't suspending service. So we're pretty much to just sit here, eat, sleep, do our jobs if we work from home, and that's it, be human. For the first time, we're being human. And it's almost scary because we don't have all these distractions. And, you know, unfortunately, I was reading a lot of stories of people um, – not taking that uh, solitude so well. And a lot of people, you know, have taken the choice to take their life. And oh, it hurt me so much. And I was like, I need to make a video. I'm not saying this video is going to go viral. Oh, hey, you never know. But I'm not saying this video is going to save the world. But at least whoever's watching it, I just want them to digest what I have to say and just to know not to give up that this is a blessing being home. And, you know, I had to find solace in my solitude at a very young age. And I think that was around like 11 or 12. And then when I was 17, I truly had to find it. And, um, you know, I grew up in a abusive household. And then I dealt with bullying. And then... I found myself homeless with my mother when I was young. And then, you know, meanwhile, no one's knowing what's going on. I have this whole secret life and, you know, running track, you know, popular, going out, friends, everything's great. And then when I was 17, I was on my own. And I needed to not, to make sure I did not end up, end up on the streets. And... It was around then when I realized that, like, I am my own best friend. <laughs> you know, no one knows this part of my life and I'm hiding this crazy secret from people and I had to go within. So the solitude is teaching us to go within. And, you know, then in college, you know, unfortunately, you know, I was like a victim of like a sexual assault and then I had to go in deeper. And when all these traumas hit me, it's like I went deeper and deeper into myself. And I went so deep that I got lost. And it was like an avatar. I see myself moving through life. But it's like, I can't feel anything. And I'm partying, I'm having fun, I'm popular, I'm in shape. But I'm miserable. And it was when I lost my grandmother. 
I believe it was um, October 2015, a year later, September 2016, I cried. And it was bad. And it was just years of years of repressed pain, repressed pain, repressed pain, and not really going inward and just projecting outward and distracting myself with all these things and pretending I was fine and not, and being ashamed to speak up like, I need help. No, I don't want to go to that party. Can you come over and talk with me? I need someone to talk to. And it was going within between 2016 to 2018 that changed my life. And I had to sacrifice my mental health. I had, sorry, I had to sacrifice popularity for my mental health because I could not have both. And through that process, I lost a lot of people because, you know, you decline invitations. You aren't the same, you know, chipper person. You're not laughing at everyone's jokes. Like, it's it's a very different flavor when you're really, really um, deep in the trenches of, you know, depression, to be honest. And I suffered with that for a while. Is when I stopped running track in college is when it hit me because that the adrenaline of being on a team and running and winning and just, ah, oh, it keeps you going. You really don't have time to feel the weight of the world and the, the memories of your past. And there's a quote that, don't remember it word for word, but depression is living in the past and anxiety is worrying about the future. And it can be very hard to balance these two right now. And I'm sure with everyone being by themselves right now, it's these things can be popping up. They can be resur resurfacing things that you've hidden from yourself are now right in front of you and you're forced to face it. And it can be very difficult. And one thing I always tell people, don't quit, like keep moving. Like you have to find the silver lining in it and doing that my whole life. I, I kid you not finding the silver lining through everything saved me. And, you know, whew, my depression was pretty bad a few years ago. I, I dropped to like 105. Like I was not eating. And it's scary because there's a lot of stigma behind it. Well, you know, people would say, I tried to like tell people and they're like, well, don't you have a lot of friends? Don't you have a whole bunch of followers? But you're always on social media. You're always dancing. And it's hard because people don't understand that you're not always like that. You know, there's days where I just want to be in bed and I can sleep for a few hours, maybe two to three hours, and it'll feel that way. In reality, I just slept through the whole Saturday and I didn't know. And, you know, there's like celebrities that put on that facade so well because they wanted, they didn't want to other people to feel their sadness. They wanted to project happiness, to make other people happy, to make up for happiness that they lacked within. So like, Robin Williams, Ernest Hemingway, um, Marilyn Monroe, Kurt Cobain, Sylvia Path. These are all people that we would have never known. God bless their soul, but they were fighting their own demons. And um, whew, going within is not easy. However, it's essential because when we're constantly surrounded by people, we pick up other people's thoughts and habits and feelings, and then we kind of can blend it in with our own. And do we really know who we are? Are you you? Or are you someone, are you being someone that you want other people to like? And energy is real. It is not spirituality. It's not some foo-foo boo-boo. Like, this is real. Like, in the law of conservation of energy, it says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred into something new. So if you have one tuning fork and you hit it and you put it next to a still tuning fork, the other tuning fork that's not moving will move and it'll pick up the same vibration of this one. And that is energy. That's science. That's physics. So it just goes to show that energy is real. So this is the first time that we're kind of within ourselves. We can withdraw from the world and it'll be accepted because at the end of the day, we cannot go outside. We cannot really do anything. So we all need to take this opportunity to go within because you'll be surprised the person you will find. I am not the same person I was three years ago, six years ago, or as a kid. 
I am Chantel. However, I am the best version of myself right now. And from going within those two years, I helped myself peel out of what felt like depression I was not going to be able to get out of. And I still struggle. Some days I could be fine for a few months and then boom. Or someone can say something that can trigger a thought and then I can weigh on the thought and then it can roll into it and the week sucks and the month sucks and I'm back, I'm fine. It comes in waves. I just learned to ride it. And that's why my alone time became so essential to me. And I like being home. I like being by myself. And it's not that I'm an antisocial person. I love people. I love meeting new people. I love connecting. However, there's times where I know, okay, Chantel, you need some time alone because I need to check check myself. I don't feel right. And from being alone, I was able to become more self-aware of my body. I understand, okay, my chest doesn't feel right. Why am I short breath? Am I anxious about something? Am I having a little panic attack? Or my head feels funny, like, did I, did I drink enough water today? My stomach doesn't feel right. What did I eat today? You're just more in tune with your body. And I believe that a lot of uh, sickness and ill health comes from the mood. Well, one, it, it stems from the gut, and that's health science. But your mood and, um, and your well-being has a lot to do with your health. So when you're more self-aware and you can do body scans, like in meditation, you can access parts of your body. And now I'm going to pull it back because I'm going to something different. But being by yourself during this time, you all should create a list. And I have a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 things I want to accomplish in the next three months. And a lot of them were, a lot of them, I kind of broken up into mind, body, and spirit. So things I want to do for my body, like fitness, things I want to do for my spirit is more diving into my spirituality and teaching it and speaking and making these videos. And then um, mind, body, and oh, and mind would be me, self-development, reading books, you know, working on my writing, learning about economics, teaching myself, I can teach others. And so I think I'm going to wrap it up. I think I have all I had to say. But during this time, you know, reach out to someone if you do need to talk. Um, if you're in New York City, there is a line you can call. It is um, actually the website is newyorkcity.gov backslash NYC well. So that's nyc.gov backslash nyc well. And it is confidential and 24-7 is a helpline. And of course, um, you know, if there there is another health line, you guys can call um, if anyone really needs someone to talk to. And it is the 1-800-273-8255. You know, uh, suicide awareness. That's a little bit deeper. Um, so to wrap this up, thank you for listening, and I'm wishing that everyone have good health, be safe, don't forget to love yourself, take care of yourself, nurture yourself, and reach out to at least one person new a week just to check in to see how they are. Be blessed. Bye. How do I turn this video off?